everyone thank you for joining me it's Lou Collins now we have another distress oxide color combination video for you today we're looking at peeled paint this is a lovely green I think it's a bit of a vintage green it's absolutely beautiful it's one of my go-to colors when I do need a green so uh, I'm really excited as well to show you the combinations that I've got in mind for you so we're going to first of all swatch this onto white cardstock to see what it really looks like when it's ink blended and then also compare it to other greens in the distress range and then I'm going to lead you into a couple of combinations that you can go away and try at home. So of course as always if you enjoy videos like this and you want to keep up with the entire series please do go and find the playlist on my channel and while you're there I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel as well because I do have in mind a fantastic uh, second series using Distress Oxide ranges so um, yeah I can't wait to get started on that but let's get through all of these colours first we go through alphabetically and as you can see we're already into the P's so peeled paint is it does have a very yellow undertone it is a beautiful green it's quite a bright green um, I always find it's a bit more of a I think this is a bit of a grass green really uh, although some people would consider more of a primary green to be a grass green I suppose it depends what your grass looked like when you were growing up um, so this one like I say very yellow base really really lovely okay so let's just bend, blend that in like so first of all so you can see how the colour looks on white cardstock and then if I pop that you can see Compared to the ink pad, it's not too different. You'd always expect the ink pad to be darker, but let's compare it to the label. I think a little bit lighter than the label shows, maybe, um, but it's not too far off. Um, I think it always seems to be a bit brighter in my mind um, than the label is. A bit more of that yellow coming through, maybe. Now let's take a look at other colours in the range. Now if you like this colour chart and you think that would be helpful in your craft room, um, what you need to do is go down, go to my website, my blog, that is listed down below, uh, it, all linked in the description, as is everything I'm using. And you can go and download and print this off for free and then you fill it in at your leisure. And that just means that as you fill it in, you know which colours you already have and which ones will work with what. So we've got peeled paint here, as you can see. Now let's just release this so we can see all of these greens. Oh, there's some greens there as well, quite different, but let's have them all here to see anyway. So we've got peeled paint just here. As you can see below that, we've got forest moss, much more of a brown tone to it. And bundled sage is a lot paler. Um, and I think more of a blue in there too. Just up ever so slightly. Crushed olive isn't too dissimilar, but it is more yellow, a little bit lighter, and much paler is shabby shutters. The only possible other comparable would be twisted citron. So uh, again, much brighter, but I do think this uh, peeled paint doesn't really have anything ridiculously close to it. So I think if you're doing these combinations, you could use twisted citron, uh, maybe crushed olive or shabby shutters uh, as an alternative if you don't have peeled paint already. Um, but I would definitely think about getting this one eventually because I really do love it as a colour. And like I say, if you're doing vintage tones, this is absolutely perfect. So let's move into our first colour combination. Now, as always, I'm going to wipe my mat and then I'm also going to dry my mat. Just... So I feel like the bristles on my brush need a good wash. So I'm going to switch to a new blending brush for this. And I'm actually going to put the green in the centre for the first colour combination. Now the reason I feel like the uh, bristles need cleaning is because they can get a little bit sort of stiff it's almost as if they've not been used for a while and they've dried with ink in them and they just go a bit hard they just need a good wash with some soapy water and left to dry thoroughly dry before you use them again so i'm going to come into this cardstock also i needed to put the uh, peeled paint at the in the center of the strip for this first combination so uh, then I'm going to come into Rustic Wilderness. So this is a really, really dark green. We'll come to this one soon, in fact, because it's the R and we're on P's now. So I don't believe there's any Q's in the distress range. So after P's come the R's. So it won't be long before we get to this one. So just filling in that white, that white blank space, first of all, with the green and then slowly starting to build some small circles into the peeled paint and then coming back with peel, peeled paint and going back over that line and working up into the rustic wilderness 
not applying any more ink to my brush and you get a lovely blend between the two. Then one more clean of my mat just to make sure I don't get any green in the next stage because we're going to be switching into a yellow and I'm going to go with fossilized amber. So this is going to go really nicely from the peeled paint into the yellow. So again, I'm going to fill in this space here. So fill in all of the blank space and then worry about your ink blending after that. Now, I've got quite a lot of fossilized amber there, so I'm not going to blend down into the peeled paint too much. What I'm going to do instead is give this a bit of a wipe, take the excess off, and I'm going to use my peeled paint to come up into the fossilized amber instead to try and stretch that green up a little bit further. So again, as we did with the Rustic Wilderness, small circles, tiny little circles working our way up, not applying any more ink now until you're really not bringing any more up and you've blended really nicely between the two. So there we've got Rustic Wilderness, Peeled Paint and Fossilized Amber. Now, as always, we'll come back and we'll take another look at this once it's fully dry because once the dye has soaked into the paper and dried and left that lovely chalky oxidized effect on top, um, so that will be the pigments left on top, that just looks, I feel it looks softer. It almost gives it a little bit of a, um, a soft focus and the blending always looks a little bit nicer once it's dried, in my opinion. If you are uh, at all confused about what oxides do and how they differ from distress inks and what the ox ox oxide element of the name actually means, um, do check out a video that I've got on my YouTube channel that explains everything um, distress ink and oxide and what the differences are between the two and hopefully that will explain it all for you. So my next colour combination are four colours and we've got here so peeled paint going into iced spruce, going into dusty concord and then going into villainous potion. Now for me this is just a yummy yummy uh, colour combination. I really really love greens and purples together. So again let's start with the peeled paint at the end. So we're going to start with this one here rather than in the middle. If you are doing a colour combination, um, there's not really an ideal way that you need to go um, so you don't have to start at the end as I did with the last one. You can start in the middle. Um, just be aware of with each colour that you're putting down, uh, how far onto the panel of paper that you're doing you're going because you don't want to end up with just a tiny little bit at the end for your fourth colour for example. So uh, maybe stagger your colours, leave a big white space so, so you're kind of really aware of how much of each colour you're leaving. Um, but I know I'm four here so I can go around about a quarter of the way and then I can do my blend line a little bit further up if I need to as well. So again, taking the green off. You don't have to clean your mat if you're going into a reasonably similar colour next but um, Ice Spruce has quite a blue-grey undertone so I have cleaned my mat for this reason. So then I'm going to, again, I'm going to put down my solid colour first and really make sure I know where that solid colour is going to be. So that's going to be there, coming up to the halfway point. And then picking up some more. I don't always, if I'm just blending two colours together, I don't put more ink on my brush. If like this I've got a gap, I need to bring that solid green up to the join line or the blend line first and then carry on blending, I do add a bit more colour just to, as you can see here, just to add some more, get rid of that white, we don't want any white there. And then I'm going to not add any more colour now and I'm going to start blending small circles. And because I'm really starting to edge into the ice spruce, I'm going to back into the ice spruce and start working down, almost dragging it down, but in the small circles down into the peeled paint. So hopefully that makes sense for you for colour blending. There we go. So peeled paint into ice spruce. Isn't that gorgeous? It looks quite moody. A sort of a, a dark landscape maybe. So really, really pretty. Okay, now we're going into purples. So another wipe here. Now the blending mat that I'm working on too. And the blending brushes that I'm using are all available from Craft Stash. So you'll find links for these down below. They're all my go-tos. 
So these are the ones that I use for all my videos and I absolutely love them, particularly the blending mats because they're clear, um, they're, you know, it's really easy to see on them. I have put alcohol ink on a few of them just so I can really see them if I need to, so I don't lose them. Um, but they're easy to clean as well and they're just ideal for saving your, um, your work surface. So I'm just going to hold this at the top while this is still drying and apply my dusty Concord. Now, hopefully you can see there why I went from iced spruce to dusty Concord. I'm going to apply some more ice spruce to my brush because this is quite a pale colour um, and uh, Dusty Concord sorry, is quite a strong colour. So can you see kind of the chalkiness between the two and how those two, there's just something about the two of them into each other that is beautiful isn't it? Really really stunning. Now again, oh, I'm going to wipe just having that wet wipe and that dry wipe or dry towel next to you whilst you're working makes things so much quicker and neater and prevents any incidents. Now for our pot of colour. I know we've put lots of colour down but this is the dark deep hit of colour. That's sort of the almost the shock colour there. Going up to the dusty Concord. Lovely, such a beautiful colour. Now this is so strong. I don't really want to bring that down into Dusty Concord any further. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to have, leave, use what's on my brush and I'm going to work towards the uh, Villainous Potion. Little circles here. And there we go. And then I've gone a bit too far. So come back again with this one. And you can just keep seesawing until you've got really lovely blend line that you're absolutely perfectly happy with. I often find with the stronger colour at the end you can kind of get away with it being uh, a little bit smaller. Look at those colours, aren't they just beautiful? Um, I feel like they're showing up more of a blue there. Um, hopefully you can see that that's purple coming through. So let's just take a look at these two colour combinations again. So there's the colour combinations for peeled paint. Uh, we've got Ice Spruce, Dusty Concord and Villainous Potion in this one and we've got Fossilised Amber and Rustic Wilderness in this one. Now don't forget to check out the playlist here with uh, all the other videos that we've done so far up to Peeled Paint and of course don't forget to subscribe to my channel here if you haven't already. Hopefully I'll see you again for the next colour.